Hello. Today I'd like to talk about a magical book for children. Really fantastic. It takes place in a magical castle where, you know, young witches are taught to ride broomsticks and uh, create potions and uh, cast spells. Whoa! Uh, and, you know, it involves an antagonistic potions teacher who, you know, has a has their eye out for the main character and a, a certain blonde student antagonist who, uh, you know, seems to get their way a lot. It's a great series part. It's a great book part of a great series and it is The Worst Witch. So if you don't know about The Worst Witch, The Worst Witch came out in the 70s. Uh, I wasn't around then either. Um, it's a small middle grade book about Mildred Hubble, who is um, sort of a heart in the right place, but not very good at anything witch. And so people, she worries that she is the worst witch. Um, she is a gal with uh, long plaited hair. She's kind of, she's described as thin, whereas her friend um, Maud is described as pudgy with bushy hair, uh, if that sounds familiar. Um, and so, um, yeah, Mildred basically has trouble where she gets in fight with, fights with this blonde character named Ethel. And Ethel is sort of a teacher's pet who everything goes smoothly for. And Mildred only manages to um, sort of reclaim her reputation as someone who belongs at the school by uh, saving everyone from some dastardly witches who want to turn everyone into toads. So that's the plot of The Worst Witch, book one. Um, sorry, spoilers. Uh, but it's a series on Netflix. That's what this bubble says. It says Netflix now a Netflix original series. Um, and that's where I found out about it first. I was on a like witchy binge. I was like binging everything witchy. Wow. Cause I, um, uh, if you don't know, I, I'm in the process of writing this book called Magic Princess Academy. And so I, I was watching everything I could that had witches. I watched Charmed, the original Charmed from TNT. I watched the 2018 reboot of Charmed. I watched Little Witch Academia, which is animated. Um, and the, uh, the, the show and the movies that are on Netflix. Um, and I watched uh, a couple other fun things. But The Worst Witch definitely, like no holds barred, like one, like just as being the best because it has everything that a Chelsea council wants. It's phenomenally sweet and cozy. Again, it, it is for children, but there are adult characters who get uh, their own arcs and motivations and, you know, sort of depth. So it's got this fantastic duality between the younger characters who are like 12 and the older characters, the, the professors, who are more like 60. Um, some of them are younger, but but the uh, the headmistress and um, the crotchety old potions master are uh, probably about 60. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's just fantastic. It's got, um, you know, great female friendships. Um, the worst witch I, in this book, they, I don't, I don't know if they explicitly state that it's a school just for girls, but they have, um, they, they say like teaching the witches and, you know, all the witches lined up. So I, I guess it's implied, uh, there, there aren't many I don't know if there are any male characters, so that's kind of cool. Wow. Feminism. But, um, so, uh, 
it's fantastic. It's super cozy. Um, it's like in the in the show, it's it's episodic. Um, but you've got this kind of arc where Mildred Hubble has to prove herself as a competent witch. Otherwise, she will be sent home to the mundane world where she'll have to, you know, just go back to public school, which like sad. But um, so, yeah, it was this great inspiration to me. Um, and it just feels fantastic. Um, the actress who plays Mildred Hubble, even if she's 10, 11, 12, she's incredibly competent. Um, she, uh, she really grows on you and, uh, her friend, um, Maud is also very good. Um, in fact, so good that apparently, um, uh, whatever the British equivalent of Broadway kind of like swiped her from the show. So she, I think the gal who plays Maud that you like grow to love isn't in the second season. They, they replace her actress. They're like, oh, Spell Gone Awry made her look different. And that's, it's fine. The new Maud is also quite good. Um, but yeah, so it's got this fantastic cast of very competent child actresses, which is always astounding to me. Um, and then it's got very good, tidy plots that uh, not only have uh, the young girls working toward either friendship or saving the day or proving themselves, but also, um, you know, they have great arcs where... Uh, you know, the uh, headmistress has to face off against her sister, her evil twin sister, literally. Um, and the potions uh, mistress, uh, Miss Hardbroom, she's like one of my favorite characters. So she's a hard ass. She's very antagonistic toward Mildred, like almost for the whole series. She just kind of has this personality where she's like, very um, irritable uh, and sort of out to get students and punish them and um, and so but she she obviously she through the arcs of her stories she shows a lot of character growth sort of either softening toward Mildred and the other students or um, sort of either like the opening of her heart to the possibility. Like you, you see her as more than just a strict teacher. You see her as a woman who probably doesn't feel like she's allowed to have fun, but, uh, you know, so that's what it is. Um, so fantastic series. Um, really can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, watch it immediately. Turn this off and go watch it. Put it on your list. I'll wait. Click that check mark. Get it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I will say that the um, CGI in the first couple of episodes is like pretty bad. There's broomstick flying that is like CGI from 2001 bad. Like it's, it's very bad. It's like, um, I mean, I'm saying it's bad multiple times, but I suppose the problem is that it's like, it's not quite eldritch horror, unfathomable to human comprehension bad. It's more like green screen in your friend Nick's basement bad. Um, but Honestly, all of the actresses just act with such fervor and enthusiasm that you're like, I don't care. I just want to have fun. I just want to watch this show about my gal friendships and feel warm inside for once. It's 2020. Um, so yeah, it's cute. They have a goodly amount of diversity, even in ways that like I wouldn't think that you like, like they, they, they just do, I guess I, I won't go into details, but they, they have lots of different types of people in the show. In some of the uh, later episodes and seasons, you get to see more of the, um, the school itself in terms of, uh, building the school's lore and, uh, the other students, sort of their backstories and minutia. That's really fun. 
um, you know, you get to see sort of the different uh, groups of kids and how they get through their life. But yeah, no, Mildred is definitely the one who makes that show great. Mildred and Maud, they... Mildred, Maud, and Hardbroom. If they could just have their own show, that'd be great. But yeah, so it's it's the worst witch. I don't know why more people don't know about it. It's really sweet. Um, totally Halloween-y. I'm really glad I found it. And I highly recommend it to you. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's the worst witch. I don't know why more people don't know about it. It's it's interesting. You know, I didn't really want to bring up Harry Potter because of what's been going on, but um, I know that it got a lot of attention. It's like the biggest understatement. Um, I think what it is, is that it's a very similar book in terms of content, but you just have a difference in... It's almost like it's a different medium like this is so short that the story it tells is like more of a vignette than Harry Potter like any of the books um this one starts out like almost like a third or halfway through the year and they're just like you know Mildred was having a day at school a witching school because that's where she went it's got this sort of perfunctory fairy tale like narrative um, and so it's just interesting to analyze, uh, what you can do with different lengths. Obviously in this one, you can't exactly have like a multifaceted plot because it's only 85 pages. Um, so yeah, you, uh, I, I, I think that's the only reason why HP got more attention than, than this because this is good quality stuff. Um, I just hope that people give this and the Netflix show a chance because it's super Halloweeny and fun and I I really I wish that they would make enamel pins of the um, so you know how in HP they have the the crest for the school. Uh, well, in this one, in the in the show, they also have a, a crest, and it's like a a cat sitting on a moon, I think. And I really want an enamel pin of one, but they don't sell merch yet. And I'm like, Arr! I just want my my worst witch merch. It's all I want in this world. They also have wow. So I'm really getting off track here, but they also have these wonderful. Um, so the gals in the school wear these uh, collared shirts uh, and like sort of a, um, what do you call it? Like an apron almost over it um, that is black and they wear a sash around it. So I'm doing this. But um, there, it took me until like season two or three to notice this, but the edges on their um, collared shirts are lightning bolts. It's so cool. I don't know why that's not a thing in fashion more. It is very cool. Um, so anyway, um, way off topic. Uh, worst witch, really cool. 